Okay, if you haven't watched my previous video about the Soviet anti-tank brigade, please watch it, because this video is a companion to the other one, and for once I will have more questions than answers. Coming up! Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. In my previous video I have uh, told the story of the Soviet anti-tank brigade during the Second World War, but there are some points that I would like to uh, explain in a bit more detail. Particularly there are four points that I am going to cover. Point number one, the name brigade. So, the original type of the anti-tank brigade, of the artillery anti-tank brigade, uh, was a very large unit, almost as big as a Soviet division of the time. The infantry tank destroyer brigade was a large unit, smaller, but still a large unit, and it was aptly called a brigade, it was smaller than a division. But the final type, the one that was created since the beginning of 1942 onwards was a much smaller unit. It was pretty much one third of a size of the original anti-tank brigade. If you have watched my video and compared the order of battles that I show in the video, you immediately have noticed this. Now, what I really don't understand is why the Soviets called brigade units that were substantially different. I mean, the f I believe that the final anti-tank brigade, the final version of the anti-tank brigade was probably actually a regiment, no more than a regiment, to be honest. So if anybody has any clue about this happened, please let me know in the comments below or in the comments on Reddit. Point number two. In the original anti-tank brigade, in the table of organization and equipment, there was the 85mm anti-tank gun that was actually an anti-aircraft gun used in an anti-tank role. Now, all the sources agree that it was removed for, from the anti-tank brigade because its use was impractical. It was, we're sure, it's not a matter of not being effective on the battlefield. The same gun will be used as the base for the gun of the T-3485 uh, a few years later. So it was definitely uh, an effective anti-tank weapon, actually available at the very early stage of the war. The sources say that the weapon was not practical. Uh, now, we don't know why, uh, in the sense that uh, what I can think about is that the mount was a typical anti-aircraft gun mount, so it was not pretty much uh, very practical or very handy to be towed around uh, off-road and on a muddy battlefield or something like that. But, I mean, if you consider the 8.8 .8 centimeter uh, flak gun, uh, the German one, the famous one, I mean, in the first version they had a mount that was even a cruciform one, which was not with the didn't even have wheels, so it was even less practical and still was it used, it was used in France, for example, there were a lot of units that were equipped with that, it was a staple of the German uh, fighting units, so we really don't know why. Once again, if you have any clue, any suggestion, any idea, or if you know for sure what brought on this decision, again, let me know in the comments below or in the comments of Reddit. Point number three. What, what was the point number three? If you have followed the narration in the previous video, you may have thought that these anti-tank brigades seemed like used to, were created like to be used and thrown away. It's a story of units being created, then disbanded or created, thrown on the battle, let them wear off, uh, let them melt away in the, on the battlefield, and then disbanded and thrown away, and eventually, uh, rebuilt as minor units. Uh, this may seem strange, but that's exactly how it was. There is a fundamental difference between the Soviet doctrine and the Western doctrine. In the West, when a unit loses 10 
to 20% of its battle effectiveness is normally retired from the battlefront and it is refitted, refueled, they, they receive complement, they receive reinforcements and it is brought back to its original force and then put in combat again. The Soviet pretty much let the units wear off till they were 50-40% even of their combat capacity, then they were retired and uh, uh, pretty much the remaining equipment, the remaining personnel was used to be incorporated in different units. Now the numbering may remain the same, some prestigious unit like the guards unit were always the same, uh, but they were still used in the same way, you know, they were used as until they were completely worn off and then rebuilt with, with uh, complements from, uh, from other units. Terrible thing to say, but it's true. Huh? Point number four. In the original video we say that the response, the doctrinal response of the United States and Soviet Union to the mechanized warfare uh, invented, or let's say, so well used by the Germans in the Second World War was the same. They both decided that the uh, armored spearheads had to be confronted not by tanks, but by specialized units. And this is the same, that's true. However, there is a big difference, uh, and I want to be clear about that. The Soviets had to make do with what they had. Uh, the, the, the very first version of the Soviet anti-tank brigade was uh, equipped with the guns and with the weapons available at the time. The Americans had the possibility to develop, at the beginning of the war, uh, um, some specific equipment, some specific vehicles, so mobile equipment, mobile guns, to confront uh, the German forces. And, I mean, we know that obviously the Soviet had a lot of occasions in which they needed to do this, the Americans much fewer. But, so, yes, there was a shared vision, but the what was fielded on the battlefield was much different. I want to be clear on this because it may appear that I'm saying that also the Americans had anti-tank brigades. So this is what I wanted to say in this video. I hope you have enjoyed this. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you are going to be very, very kind, please hit the like button. If you're going to be mean, hit the dislike button, but okay, that's your choice. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.